So we just finished doing lateral head impulse, and now we want to do the vertical canals, the anterior and posterior canals. So now we're going to start with LARP, that's left anterior, right posterior, so you select LARP, and the first thing you need to do is center the head. You want to make sure that the patient is sitting straight directly in front of the fixation dot, and make sure their head is completely aligned with the fixation dot. The center button determines the zero point or your reference point. So for accurate measurements, the patient's head should be facing straight at the fixation dot and not moving when the center button is clicked. So click the center button, and then you want to move the head 35 to 45 degrees to the right. Now this is easy to remember. Left starts with L, and you want to do the opposite of the first letter. So you turn to the right. By turning to the right, you're lining up the left anterior canal towards the fixation dot and the right posterior canal towards the fixation dot. So why do we move the head? first thing is when we move the head to the right, we're making sure that our head impulses are a pure pitch motion and not a combination of pitch and roll. By performing a pure pitch motion, it makes it a lot easier to perform your head impulses accurately. So that's one reason why we move the head. Now, even though we're moving the head to the right 35 to 45 degrees, we have the patient look back at the fixation dot and not towards their nose. And the reason we do that is because then the eye movement is pure vertical and not a combination of vertical and torsional eye movement. When you measure torsional eye movement, you need to do it at a slower frame rate to be able to pick up the torsional component. We are using 250 hertz to pick up the catch-up saccades. And so therefore, at a higher frame rate, we cannot measure the torsional component. So we want to make sure that we have just a pure vertical eye movement. Now, the other thing is, is that if you had some torsional component in there, it could also affect your gain. So you want to make sure that you move the head 35 to 45 degrees to the right and that the patient is still staring back at the fixation dot. So the next question is, is why is 35 to 45 degrees important? Well, first let's talk about the head position feedback. This is the head that you see on your screen that is measuring your patient's head movement based on the sensor in the goggles and therefore when you move to 35 degrees it turns yellow so 35 to 39.9 degrees is yellow 40 to 46.9 degrees is green and 47 to 49.9 degrees is yellow again the minimum is to be in the yellow range it's ideal to be in the green range so the head position feedback is a guide to help you position the patient's head in the optimal range the head has to be a minimum of 35 degrees in order to test LARP and RALP the head impulse at 35 degrees still stimulates a canal position at 45 degrees with about a 98% effectiveness. The problem is that a head impulse at 35 degrees will also stimulate canals in the opposite testing plane, so in the route plane, with about 17% stimulus magnitude, which is still significant. So even though 35 is the minimum, it's best to be at 45. The further you go, closer to 45, the less you're stimulating the other two canals that you're not testing. And to learn more about this, you need to refer to our frequently asked questions. Okay, so now we're doing LARP, left anterior, right posterior. You move the head 35 to 45 degrees, and you can see that the head is green, the left anterior canal is green, and the right posterior canal is green. Once you have the head positioned properly, you need to move the ROI. So that's your ROI box, you need to slide it over, and make sure the pupil is centered in the ROI box. Make sure the patient can still see the fixation dot. And you do not have to recalibrate. Remember the calibration you did at the beginning of lateral is saved and it'll be reused for LARP and RALP. So now you want to put one hand on the chin and the other hand on top of the head. The hand on top of the head should be your dominant hand. So if you write with your right hand, make sure your right hand is on top of the head. And then your other hand, your left hand, would be under the chin. You want to make sure that your fingers are facing the fixation dot because you want to make sure that you're doing your head impulses towards the fixation dot and not towards the nose. So the hand on top of the head, your fingers should be facing the fixation dot. The hand under the chin should just be bracing the chin. You don't want to curl your fingers up the side of the cheek because then you could actually be moving the cheek and any movement of the cheek could possibly move the goggle. You just brace your hand under the chin and then the other hand on top of the head. Okay, so when you're doing your head impulses, when you move downward, move the head downward, the head impulses, you're stimulating the anterior canal. 
When you move the head backwards, you're stimulating the posterior canal. Remember, it is still a small amplitude, only 10 to 15 degrees, and the velocity is going to be a little bit smaller than your lateral head impulses. So lateral, we're used to turning our head from side to side, but the movement from downward and backward is a little bit more difficult for humans. So you still have a high velocity, but it's more like 100 to 150 degrees instead of 150 to 200. So you want to make sure you still have a good velocity and that, again, the amplitude is small, only 10 to 15 degrees. So now you're performing your head impulses. You want to make sure your data matches the training curves. The only head trace which should be moving is the blue curve. The orange and pink should be fairly flat. If the head is drifting more towards center, if you're pulling it back to center by accident, or if you direct the impulse towards the patient's nose, you will get an orange light in the operator feedback and a message that says, wrong plane stimulated. So this is a new message for version 2.0. So remember, when you're doing head impulses, you can always get it as too slow, too much overshoot. But now, if you're stimulating the wrong plane, you'll get a message that says, wrong plane stimulated. So again, your impulses should be matching up to the training curves. You should be seeing the green light. You should be only be seeing movement in the head trace, that is the LARP, that's your blue trace. So once you're done with LARP, then you want to do RALP. So now let's choose RALP. RALP is right anterior, left posterior. Again, make sure the patient's head is centered in front of the fixation dot. Click center, and now move the head 35 to 45 degrees to the left. Now remember, the first letter is R, R for right. You're going to go the opposite. So we're going to go left and verify that the patient can still see the fixation dot. You want to reposition the ROI and click OK. When you have the head positioned properly, when you move the head downward, you're stimulating the right anterior canal, and when you move the head backwards, you're stimulating the left posterior canal. Again, no need to recalibrate, as we have already done this before. Make sure your data matches the training curves, Make sure the light is green and also be looking. The pink trace now for RALP should be the only head trace that is moving. The orange and the blue should be fairly flat. If you get an orange light and it says wrong plane stimulated, you're either moving the head towards the nose or you pulled the head back towards the center. So remember, your data should match the training curves, the green light should be on, and you should be getting accepted results. When you have finished, you have collected data for all six canals, lateral, LARP, and RALP.